NASCAR uh, Chevrolet R07 block that we're doing some lawnmower work on. Uh, we have about 15 thousandths to come out of it. Uh, we're all indicated in, set up, and ready to cut. So, Ben, you'll start the cycle. All right. So one of the things we're looking for on this pass is making sure that it's not going to hit the block. We're just trying to cut the caps right now, and then later on, we'll, uh, when we change the bit out, we'll go ahead, do an establishing pass, and then we'll do our final pass. It's hitting pretty well even. Yep, yeah, parting line looks dusting. good. Yeah. Just dusting. To be fair though, this was a lot out. Eight one, seven four. Yeah. So it crown. makes sense. Yeah, it has a larger crown than usual. Another thing you like to look for is the finish in the cap as well. We did hit a little bit in the walk, but that's okay because it's just slightly hitting and we can go ahead and move our, um, when we move our bit over, we can go ahead and Move it basically just another tenths out. We zero the old, uh, we zero the location of that on the old bit, and then we move the tenth out. We'll do a pass so that way we know where we are, and then we'll be able to do our final pass from there. We've done quite a few of these blocks now, and what we've found is a trend of the three center uh, saddles and the mains being uh, crowned a little bit. So even though the front and the rear won't hit the block where we're at right now, we are taking a little bit of material out of the three. This is something else you want to look for, the chips building up. Usually the chip breaker does a pretty good job knocking them off, but if it doesn't, what I like to do is, as soon as it indexes up, stop the machine, and make sure that it stopped because you don't want to get your hands caught in it or nothing. And then pull the chips off of it with a hand or rag or something. And then uh, you can go ahead, yellow out the other locations, and then and make sure that you have adequate vertical clearance. And then you can start auto cycle again and resume where you left off.
cage is zeroed. Go ahead and clean all the chips out of the bores. Just want to make sure to get those out to get as accurate of a measurement as possible. Reading five, five thousandths to go in the front. Five thousandths and six tenths. Five thousandths and four tenths. Five thousandths and four tenths again. and five thousandths and three tenths. Back in the studio, now that is a block right <laughs> there. Keith. Share with everybody out there, Randy is down on the end, and Randy and I are constantly having conversations about uh, seeding this field for the future, finding the sure. young people that are interested in machining and are going to, you know, fill the, the sport and fill these engine shops when you guys eventually uh, decide to move on and go out and sit on the couch, which will never happen. Ryan just <laughs> told us he's 30 years old, so Ryan is young, but the kid we saw in that video, tell us about him. Well, he's, <clears throat> I hope he's not one of a kind, but, you know, he's one of a kind that we've had in mm -hmm. quite a while. And as I was just talking earlier, uh, a year ago now, he knew what a micrometer was, did not read it, had no idea what a double gauge was. But we needed somebody to operate the machine. We got, we got a contract to do quite a few of these blocks. And... Jeff and I didn't have the time to pull away from everything else to do it. So we talked how we're going to do this. We can't lose the contract. But how we how, we can't work 26 hours a day. We just can't. So this boy had been working with us as, as an apprentice or tear down, clean up, done anything. But he truly a yes sir, no sir guy. Very respectful. Wanted to learn. So we said, well, what about Ben? All you gotta do, punch buttons, right? And uh, so we asked him, you know, would you like to learn to do this? Sure. Give him the manual, tell him watch videos, come in. We work with him, show him how to read the mic, let him take one and practice with it, same way with the dial board gauge. And of course, he's not intimidated like myself with the computer. And so he takes to it right away. And um, within a few days, he's operating the machine. And he's reading with intents and machining with intents. There you go. A week before, he had no idea what a thousandths was. So we had to physically show him how much a thousandths really is, much less a, a tenth of a thousandths. So now he did, we were, we would not turn him to the wolves without. So we were there. One of us was over his shoulder emphasizing speed is not what we're after. Accuracy is what we're looking for. That's what we have to have. If you're in doubt, if anything, stop. Come get one of us. And he was smart enough to do it and not too proud to ask. So, um, gosh, uh, we we were amazed, and it, it took that burden off of us. You know, now we can, with confidence, do this job. But I, it was it's kind of funny. After doing four or five blocks, uh, you know, I was watching him and everything going good. Yes, sir. Uh, I said, you know, you realize this is a twenty thousand dollar block. 
He said <laughs> Now you made him nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and I, did not, I did not say that to intimidate him, but he needed to know. Right. He said, I had an idea that it was very expensive. I didn't think it was that bad. But, and it didn't intimidate him. You know, and I said, and I ex- explained to him and emphasized, this is not to scare you. This is to show you that you're qualified <clears throat> to work mm-hmm. on something that critical and that expensive, and you can do it. Yeah, that's so, motivational. And that's what, that's what it is. Randy, you talk about it all the time, that, that we need to uh, motivate, and I think that's a perfect example. And inspiration is a key part of the ingredient, but the first thing we need to recognize is that there's an awful lot of talent out there that is looking for a place to land to find a career. The EPE, a lot of the foundation of what we've done in the beginning here, has always been about motivating young people to say, hey, this is a good gig. This is something where you can learn, you can uh, have visual hands-on, but the technology we bring to the, the, the program now, they're interested. You know, it's not the deal in the old day when I grew up. Man, I started in the cleanup department. When I got home in the night, the wife wouldn't let me come in with the clothes, strip there, and then come in. You know, it, it's a different gig now. Now we've got opportunities to have a really bona fide career with these young men, but it's supported. And this is the key part of this thing. This is what EPE, I think, is all about. We're giving visual applications. We're showing right now $20,000 box can be done to perfection with good talent. But the bottom line is, it is all about learning. We are moving to that next level. That's what's going to excite the next generation. We need to keep them involved. Well, one thing Keith just mentioned there I thought was pretty interesting is, we, do, we chatted about this a little bit yesterday, is that what I feel like is happening right now is that everything's a coming together of that there are a lot of younger people, like Ben, like my son Ben, um, that they know they don't want to have a desk job. Right but what career options are out there for you and the idea of learning to read you know old machines with load meters and stuff like that 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 doesn't that not intuitive to them but digital stuff is intuitive that's what they they grew up doing that so the fact that you now have you know balancing machines and mills and hones and things that can do it with that digital interface that you can go back and watch some videos and, it, and then be able to kind of pick it up and run. I mean, perfect example. I mean, Joe Lee's back there, you know, Dominator's daughter, machining your block. Yes, exactly. And into it, too. Yeah. I spoke with her yesterday. She's 16 years old. I, I didn't realize she was that young. She's 16 years old. It's like, you want to do this? She's like, I want to do this. <laughs> yeah. It's like, That's great. what do your friends think about what you want to do? She's like, they're not that into it. <laughs> I was like, why not? And she said, well, it's, she goes, it's too much for some of them. But when you started, not everybody was into cars either. The car culture, you know, you think about a high school and the football and and, and all the the car guys in the movie Grease, you know, the car guys were a smaller group. It just naturally, maybe not outcasts, but smaller group or outcasts, certainly. Mm, Uh, Always. It's just a natural thing. It wasn't always a mainstream deal. Ice, ice cream, vanilla, is the most favorite and most purchased flavor. But it's not the best flavor. There's, no. there, there's and, that, and that's the thing. And so you don't have to find hundreds of young people who are ready to dive into the machine shop, but you have to find the right ones. Right. And it looked like you just you, you found the right one and you're, you're working it. And it's funny watching the block get shaped into something that's going to make a lot of horsepower and the, the person doing it was in that similar situation right. i think that's great yes it is Je- tell them the only problem we got with him right now yeah it's in one thing about uh ben is uh where he, where we seen that we could really um make this deal work was when we started on the machine is machine movement like he knew which button to push like just talk, and like it just like come to him just like right off the bat and uh, that's been the hardest part for me to adapt to the machine when I was learning it um, you know if I wanted to go right I went left you know and yeah. uh, that sort of thing but he had the machine movement down all the way I mean just the like the interface just, to him was just, just intuitive the, the, I guess being so much younger and just was just right off the bat but um, the only problem we've had with him is he got to, and this, this has happened in, just recently is he got to um, take a little bit longer to indicate in, and um, what he was 
thinking was way off. He was only off a matter of a couple tenths. Uh, he was thinking the indicator was a little different. Um, so he was, on a last word indicator, he was a needle width off. <laughs> yeah. And um, from one end to the other, and he was having trouble getting it to repeat. But it was a needle width on a last word stereo indicator <laughs> that he was worried about. <laughs> and he was very, very concerned about it. And I was like, he knew it's twenty thousand dollar block. He didn't want to mess it up. Yeah. And I was like, this is what I consider perfect. If you can get them like this yeah. for you to do this on this part of the thing, if you can get it within that needle width, I mean, you're good. That, that is, that's that awesome. Is great. What we had to explain to him was the machine over there that we did this process before. If we were within a thousandths, that's as good as it's going to get. Right. You know, no matter how good the operator and all is, you know, that was, so uh, that was really gratifying. Did he, he come got me, he come got Jeff, you know, to explain this to us. He's, he was bothered by it. But yes. we, yeah. we had to explain to him that, and now he's going to love it. We're setting the target for genuine perfection. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Keyword perfection, though. Let's think about it. Perfection 40 years ago, perfection 30 years ago, 20 years, 10 years. It's a moving target, right? Yes. Okay. But that's because technology has allowed us to challenge that. What we used to do, we sort of surrendered to the available technology. Look what we got now. I mean, if I had, if I took this back 40 years, holy moly, mm -hmm. you know, this would be killer. This is what's new about our industry now. This is where it's really quite exciting to the young generation. They can come in and take a, a legitimate qualified technician and make him sit back and say, holy moly, this guy's good. Uh, it's, it's neat. It's a nice transition, and it's all beneficial to young people. Yeah, and I, I think that's exactly what the content of this next video is all about, is going back and overview of that history and progression to get to where we are today. So stay tuned, watch this video. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. He told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen.